Well, dear students, uh, you have seen the various aspects of implements being connected to tractor and how they operate in the field and what are the de different design factors which are considered if you want to have a certain matching implement to a power source. The last lecture we had talked about the PTO driven tractor rotavator and we had considered all the factors and we saw how the an efficient design of a rotavator can be uh, performed. Now, in this series of lecture, my seventh lecture here talks of tractor implement hitching systems. Well, you might have seen how to hitch an implement in the in, uh, field which, uh, which, which was described earlier. Now, we will talk of certain other aspects which are very important from academic point of view and from the point of view of the researchers and the designers. Right, let us go to the slides. Now, in this slide I have shown the different hitching points. Well, you may remember that uh, we have already discussed uh, in my uh, previous lectures that the three locations where the drawbar is connected with mm, of the tractor, single point, two point and three point. Well, we had discussed earlier that two point hitches are generally for uh, larger equipment and they are not in vogue in the Indian conditions. We do have the single point and the three point. So, we will discuss about the single point and three point in later course of the slides here, but let us look at some of the important features of the tractor implement combination. For example, have a look at this. Here, <coughs> This is the top view of the uh, tractor here. In, in this case, we can very easily see what are the details. I have already explained these details uh, in previous course, but it is very Im imperative to have a look at uh, those parameters again uh, for better understanding and have a correlation between what has happened earlier and what is now. So, you can see that the wheel base, wheel base is the center line between distance between the center line of the front and the rear, this is the wheel base here. Similarly, the wheel trade, I discussed that wheel trade has a stronger bearing on the uh, row to row spacing um, which when we want to change, although um, uh, this is provided in by the tractor manufacturers, but uh, um, farmers uh, because of various reasons, uh, particularly uh, the difficulty in changing this, they do not change that and uh, use. Uh, this is the distance between the uh, center line of the rear wheels here and maybe the same case in case of the front as well. The, if you see the side view of this, how the mm, hitches are kept. Now, in the side view of this, you can see that this is the uh, front uh, axle, this is the rear axle. Then the mm, lower links, you can see that these are the lower links, mm, this is the hitch point, this is called the hitch point. This is the lower link which whose hitch point is this, then this is the uh, lower link mm, point again of the other uh, lower link point, then fifth, this is the upper hitch point, this is the upper hitch point where and uh, upper link is this. So, upper link is this here, I mean linked at this position and this is the hitch point, this is the linked at this position, this is the hitch point. Uh, on the, um, there are two lower links here. The, the this distance six is the vertical convergence distance. Now this vertical convergence distance is between the CPB virtual hitch point and the horizontal virtual hitch point. Now here, the virtual hitch point, uh, if you recall, I had discussed earlier that you will get a virtual hitch point when you extend the uh, the top link backward and the lower link backward, you will get a virtual hitch point. Of course, when a implement is uh, connected to this, then uh, this will keep on changing, the, the location of this will keep on changing. But then to understand, uh, this is the point where which is the virtual hitch point, when you extend the, uh, the top link and the lower links here. The horizontal hitch point of course, C, CPH is the horizontal hitch point which is shown in this diagram here. 
this is the horizontal hitch point at this position because when you see in the uh, top view this is the location which which will be seen here. So, we will talk of the single point hitch. Now, what is single point hitch and how the different implements are connected to this? Let us have a look at it. Vertical hitching system, in fact, the implement having hinged um, uh, pull members and support fields or runners. There are two conditions uh, which uh, we encounter actually when uh, larger implements are hitched to the single hitch point. Uh, we will talk of the trailer at some other uh, point of um, time in our um, course of this lectures, but we will just talk of the implements particularly the moldboard ploughs. We have a look at the moldboard plough, have a look at this figure 1 here. Well, have a look at figure 1, figure 1 here. Here there is a runner, we can um, see that there is a runner here and these are the 3 um, uh, ploughs and this, this is the location where we the this particular implement is hitched. You can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, these are the um, uh, positions where this implement can be connected. Now, when this is connected to the hitch point of the tractor, you can have a look at this that the hitch point at, of the tractor drawbar is somewhere here, which is in fact when we are talking of the line of pull, we are talking of the line of pull which is in fact a line which has already been explained to you that it is a line which is joining the center of resistance which is point G over here and the, the H point. So, this is the line which is the center of um, line of pull from the center of resistance to this. Now, what important uh, point is to be noted here is the H point is too low. When we are attaching to this point the lowest one the H point becomes very low, but then advantage here is that then this runner is in a position to take the load and then maintain a position of depth of the um, operator with respect uh, depth of the implement with respect to the uh, tractor's operation. And therefore, we call this to be a stable condition here of the system of uh, um, operation when the um, field is being ploughed with this particular implement. But then if you see the second figure, figure 2 here. The, the runner is still there, but what has happened is now instead of the lowest one, it has been fixed to the a higher position a, here. So, the moment you have put to a higher position, what happens? That the position of this G, the center of resistance here is shifted forward at this location here, this location here. And that means that once this location is the implements get lifted and when the implement gets lifted, then this particular wheel, this uh, runner wheel is also lifted and then it is not in a position to uh, operate or maintain the uh, depth of operation and that is why this condition we call it an um, uh, unstable condition. The, uh, the rear of plow will be very unstable when momentarily variations in the direction and magnitude of RB are considered. because. This is the um, RB force, this is the force RB here and this is the force over here. In case of you see the condition of this, now we get this particular uh, parallelogram here and in this case we are getting a situation which is like this here, but ultimately since it has been shifted we are getting a situation like this here, where P V is the resultant where shifted here. Also it passes through the point P F here but then it is not a stable condition and it will also not maintain the depth of uh, operation as in case of uh, the stable one. A uniform depth will not be maintained. There will be a depth uh, definitely in this, but uniform depth will not be maintained although both are uh, hinged implements. So, it is important to understand that if the hitching uh, of these implements are done at proper location on, on the drawbar with these points here, then you will get a stable condition and a uh, unstable condition. Stable condition will help you to maintain uh, uniform um, depth of operation and unstable condition will not allow even the runner to maintain a certain depth of operation as, the, as well as the G will also get shifted here and there will be unnecessary 
load onto this and we will not be in a position to uh, um, uh, utilize the whole capacity of this particular uh, equipment. This is important. Now, well, now we will go to another um, case where again we are attaching the implement to a single um, uh, point. Uh, where we have the hitch system possible hitch system could be obtained by changing the height of the drawer well we know that uh, the when the drawer is here if we want to change the position of the hitch we can shift the har have the location of the drawer by changing the position of the lower links so, when we change the position of the lower links, we can do this part height of the drawer can be changed. Adjusting the position of the lower links at f this position, so that we, we can do this part of it. Now, this type of full type of implement you, you can have a look at this. The line of pull is, is through g and vertical hitch point f is at a tractor drawer. So, this is the location where but, um, uh, the point of hitch is here and g is at this position. Now, there appears to be a slightly better condition of uh, operation in this case as compared to the previous uh, implements, but this is a rigid pull in, in a type of member. Earlier ones we had a wheel there and there was uh, no rigidity with respect to the uh, manufacturing of this or with the uh, frame of this as compared to the previous ones. So, here we find that the hitching of this rigid pull member or the implement is at an elevated position or a position where we want to have, wherever we want to have we can uh, use this and the center of resistance is at point G here and the forces the way we had talked of the RV, for RV and PF are connected which pass through the center line and which pass through the hitch point as well as center of resistance. G, the point G is fixed by intersection of A, B and Q, B. This is quite natural because uh, the locations where the forces are acting of the weight of the implement as well as the, um, the soil forces. So, this position remains uh, same here, but then the whole mechanics will change, but it, ha but it has a case particularly when it is a rigid pull member. Now, in this case, what is so important is the, the Q V passes slightly behind the axial center line to, um, to supply torque which overcomes the wheel bearing friction and causes the rotation of the wheels. This is important. See Q V, this Q V force is this, this is, this is the Q V force here. So, Q V passes slightly behind the axis center line of the pull. So, slightly behind the axis center line of pull to supply a torque. Now, this, this torque will help us in overcoming, this curve will help us in overcoming the friction bearing. Now, this is the one which will help us in overcoming the bearing friction and then causes the rotation of the wheels. So, the wheel will rotate and uh, the um, implement is, will be in a position to move. Now, this is the, this is the tractor um, rear wheel is the tractor rear wheel. So, what has happened is this G has come inside the tractor wheel. This is uh, as compared to the other ones, this G has come inside this and it will help us in hitching, taking the implement forward by creating uh, this torque which will overcome the bearing friction and then move this, move the uh, tractor, I mean help this uh, in moving the tractor forward. Okay, let us uh, go to the other side when we have discussed about the single. So, uh, I just wanted to show you that if we compare the conditions here of the pull type implements being hitched. So, the conditions are here you can see that the wheel where is the location of the wheel here and what is the location of the wheel in the other um, cases. In the stable condition you can see where is the um, uh, G here where it is away from behind the um, wheels where it comes inside in case of a unstable condition which is not acceptable. And then when we go to this condition, it is falling in between this. So, these are the three different conditions under which the implements are attached. Now, it is um, uh, when it depends on what type of implement you want to 
use and what is the condition in which, in which it has to be of the soil as well as the total output capacity of the implement and so on and so forth. But then one must uh, uh, look into that these single point hitch implements are very large implements and they are used with very high horsepower tractors which in uh, these conditions are uh, not very much in use. But what are important is the single point hitch mostly used uh, ones are the trailers or the for the haulage operations. We will discuss that slightly later. Then now we will talk of another aspect of this uh, condition. See horizontal hitching of the pull tab implements. Now those we had seen the vertical hitching where the, the hitching was uh, in a vertical plane. Now when we talk of this pool implements being uh, connected in the horizontal plane, we can see that this is the drawbar here and this is the hitch point at this location. Well, we can see that this is the this is the plow. This is the top view of the plow. We find that the center of resistance is the, at this location, and this is connected to the hitch point. Now you can see the hitch point is over here, so it is following the center position here. So the line of pull is, if you see, this is the line of pull in this condition. Now. Mold board plow will operate satisfactorily even when the line of pull is at considerable angle from the line of travel. This is the important part when you talk of horizontal hitching of this. Horizontal hitching of the pull type of implements will have this advantage that uh, even if there is certain uh, inclination or even slightly more inclination even then the operation will be satisfactory. For hitching its location can be considered uh, can be assumed to be one fourth of the width of cut over the landslide and little behind the rear edge of the share. Now we, we are talking of this um, position that means the hitch for hitching its location can be assumed to be one fourth of the width of the cut over the land side and little behind the rear edge of this. This is this is point which needs to be looked into. Location of edge this location of edge varies depending upon the soil condition. This edge here, this is the position here. Now this will definitely vary with the soil condition, the length of the land side and amount of side force taken by the rear furrow wheels. So the important positions or the important aspects to be looked into are the line of pull and the position, uh, hitch point and the center of resistance here which will have a variation on the type of the soil and the um, amount of uh, the total length of uh, the land side because the that uh, length the land side takes a certain amount of force uh, side thrust and maintains a clear furrow. So, um, it will also have that. So, depending upon um, that uh, um, force which the land side takes he, the location of edge will uh, have a bearing on that. So, and uh, the importance which I told earlier is that it will have a satisfactory operation even if the line of pulley is at considerable angle from the line of travel. Yes, this is possible because the line of travel if, the, if this is the con, uh, here and it is slightly away then also um, uh, it will have a satisfactory operation because the hitching is in the uh, horizontal plane. This is the importance of this. Well, now it uh, is a separate thing whether we will be in a position to use this under what conditions that is a separate uh, uh, discussion altogether. Uh, at this point of time we will limit up to this as to what is the horizontal hitching of the pull type of implements, what is vertical hitching of pull type of implements, what are the locations, how they are stable, how they are unstable and what happens to the, uh, the point of hitch as the center of position, where does it go and which way it helps in the total operation of the uh, implement with the tractor uh, source. This is what we discussed in these uh, slides. Let us go forward and have a look at uh, some other aspects of this hitching. Well, three point hitch. We would like to have a three point hitch which is uh, the uh, drawbar which is most used and uh, 
in fact uh, supposed to be the least um, effective uh, so far as the power is concerned and the amount of power that we get from the tractor. Uh, and you will find that um, in most of your um, problems and the designing you will be always talking of 3 point h. Well, when we want to know this 3 point hitching, we must know about what are these details of these components of such a hitch point or hitch system or a hitching system. Well, <clears throat> look at this figure here, 3 point hitch categories are given here, but look at these, here we have given all details of the uh, components. For example, the upper uh, link, one is upper link here, this is the upper link here, one. Two is the lower link, two is lower link, now this, this is one lower link, this is another lower link, this is two. Three, upper hitch point, now this is the um, upper, um, upper link and this is the hitch point of the upper link, three. Four, lower hitch point, now lower hitch point, there are two lower hitch point because there are two lower links. So, this and this are the two lower hitch points. Upper link point, fifth is upper link point. At what position this upper link is connected in the tractor body? So, this is the position for it. Lower link point, now where the lower links are connected, this is 6. Now, these are connected. Well, well this is not uh, shown here but they are connected at this position, yes it is shown here, so, this is position at which it is connected and this one is connected on the other side of it, just opposite. Then upper hitch attachment, upper hitch attachment, 7 is upper hitch attachment, now this is upper hitch attachment over here, a lower hitch attachment, now at 8, now this is the location where lower hitch attachment, then 9 upper link attachment here upper link attachment is this. So, this position is the upper link attachment. Then tenth is linch pin, well this linch pin is important when we are attaching the, uh, uh, the implement to this. Then lift rods, well the lift rods are there, this is the lift rod here, this is the lift rod here, because they help us in adjusting the position of the uh, links, they help us in adjusting position of the links. Twelfth is mast, now this is, this is the um, uh, mast here, uh, which is of course, uh, cannot be appreciated with this small diagram, but that once you have a look and you might have seen in the um, field I explained that this is the mast here. The mast height, mast height is this, that position of this with respect to this, so this is the mast height, this distance is the mast height. So, it is important to understand what are these, where they are connected, the um, lower points, the, hitch, um, the um, upper point, what are the connect, their connections in the body, because then it, um, uh, when it, the uh, bigger implement is connected, whether it is a mounted type or a, um, a trail type, you will find that the, um, if there is a failure or if there is a lot of load on to the implement, the failure takes place at these locations in the body of the tractor. We have seen in some of the experiments uh, at one of the companies that the failure took place uh, from this location of the body of the tractor where the uh, lower link uh, was were uh, connected. So, um, uh, we had to um, uh, look into the material of construction at that location. So, it is very important to let you know as to what are these and how they are uh, framed, how they are connected to the tractor, how they are connect, they are in a position to be connected to the implement and what are the other details, this has been explained over here. Now, since these are being universally used, there has been a uh, standard and that standard is ASAE standard S217.1 which I have written here over here. There are categories, so category 1 belongs to 15 to 35 kilowatt, uh, about 20 to 45 watts per tractor. Category 2, 30 to uh, 30, 75, category 3 and category 3 n uh, both uh, well depends on the uh, locations 
uh, in some of the other European countries and all that 60 to 168 kilowatt hours power and fourth and fifth is 135 to 300 hours power. These are the categories, but we will find that in our uh, Indian conditions most of this we will be talking of uh, category 2. Category 1 is where we have been using the implements earlier smaller implements, but because of the uh, more and more use of uh, larger equipment for more and more coverage area and uh, saving in time, then now we are uh, shifting to 50 horsepower tractor, 55 horsepower tractor and then that falls in category 2. So, this will be the um, important category for us. It is important to know that these are the category exist because they, uh, these are being used all over the world. The standards for 3 point hitch specify all dimensions including minimum lift um, uh, limit of lifting height, lateral leveling adjustments and side sway and minimum lifting force to be available at the each point. This is important to know what does this category mean and what are the important things which have been universally used or being universally used by all, all of these people. There, but there is a limitation of this particular H point. What is the limitation? The link lengths and the amount of horizontal and vertical curvatures are not specified. So, one must know that while these are very universally used and there are certain limitations or the values which have been already fixed uh, being to be used uh, worldwide, we find that the link lengths and the uh, horizontal, and, uh, horizontal and vertical convergence are not specified. This you can be taken as the limitation of Another thing which uh, um, worth mentioning here, uh, you might have seen the uh, hitching of implement in the, uh, in the field, we had uh, shown you, but there are uh, very important uh, devices uh, uh, or couplers which, are, which we call quick attaching coupler for a 3 point hitch. Now, the beauty here is that when this coupler uh, is uh, connected to the um, uh, implement, uh, it will be easier for the tractor operator to just uh, bring the uh, tractor near and get it attached without uh, leaving his tractor seat. That means, you have might have seen that uh, when it was attached in the field earlier case, uh, people were uh, trying to bring the tractor, uh, the operator were bringing the tractor near and the other persons were there to put the hitch uh, locations and then uh, this was being done and it took about uh, uh, 2, 3 minutes of time. But in this case, it is that is why it is known as quick attaching coupler and it is very simple in construction. Uh, many places where you, it is used saves time, of course, there is a cost involved in that, but then does not matter one uh, who wants to save time and who, who, who does not have people to help him in hatching, he can uh, definitely use this. Free link of uh, 3 point hitch system. We, we must uh, have some information about this free link, uh, for vertical forces analysis of free link operation. See location, we, it is very simple that uh, as we discussed earlier that there will be gauge wheel, then there is uh, the center of resistance, center of resistance here where the forces of, um, of the implement are, uh, are here, the, the vertical force of the implement, then the soil forces and the uh, forces uh, in between the implement and the uh, tractor while the um, tractor is being pulled. So, the gauge <coughs> support the gauge wheels supporting surfaces of the implement, free link operation gives more uniform depth operation. Here it gives more uniform depth operation because it is filled and this gauge wheel it, it in fact gauges the um, operation here. Yes, uh, um, so, it helps in this condition of uh, operation and we have hardly any problem with regard to the maintenance of the depth operation because then depth operation if there is changing then maybe in the irrigation etcetera more amount of uh, water will be at some location or the other. So, it is very important that we should have a free link operation where we can get a uniform depth operation. A location of F ships automatically as the implement is raised or lowered. Yes, here this particular 
position of f which is again in case of uh, the three point linkage we know that this is the virtual hitch point. So, virtual hitch point this will definitely have a change in position as the implement is lifted or lower uh, um, in course of its operation in the field. And uh, this, uh, this shift promotes rapid entry of the tools across the bottom surface such as mold bolt bottom. Well, uh, the oper this operation is easier uh, from this point of view that uh, rapid entry of the tool takes place in this case. Restrained link. In restrained link uh, operation, uh, uh, this this provides greater tractability of the uh, depth fluctuations caused by ground surface irregularities are greater in this uh, restrained link over here. But then it, we are controlling by the uh, hydraulic uh, lever. So the importance of a restrained link here, you can have a look at this that the line of pull is uh, shifted uh, as compared to the other case and the restrained link operation the effect of the implement upon the tractor when the implement is at its operating depth is independent of the hitch linkage arrangement. This is the important things with respect to a restrained link here and it provides greater tractability, um, tractability uh, depth fluctuations which are caused by ground surfaces. Uh, irregularities are greater in the restrained link, yes, but then uh, they are taken care of by the uh, hydraulic system of the uh, tractor. The, the in, in the restrained link, the implement gets all or most of the vertical support from the tractor, yes. This is the important part with respect to when we cover the free link operation there. Here, whole weight of the tractor, uh, whole weight of the implement is on to the tractor and hence it helps in the uh, um, uh, pulling ability of the tractor as compared to the free link uh, um, operation. This is the, well I think then in this uh, um, course uh, um, of my lecture, uh, what I have tried to explain to you is how the hitching is done with respect to single hitch and three point hitches and what are the different types of uh, forces which are acting into it, what is a three point linkage and what are its specifications world over, what is its capacity, what are its limitations etcetera. I think then we will look into the other aspects of this uh, system in my later course. Thank you.